Hello and welcome to 360 Sports on Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashemi. It was quite uh, a fantastic weekend. Uh, Super Falcons uh, at least getting the, that victory at the MKU, Abela National Stadium here in Abuja. At least having, at least with a that slim victory, 1 0 against the Bayana Bayana of South Africa. And uh, both countries uh, say everything is to be play for in the return leg that will come up tomorrow, Tuesday, at uh, Loftus Verse Feed in South Africa. We'll be looking at that and coupled with uh, other stories on the show and also match day 29 in the Nigerian Premier Football League. For Enugu Rangers, after 10 matches on BT run, uh, that on BT run was ended uh, in the seven goal thriller by Kassina United over the weekend. Despite that loss, they still stay at the top of the table, but just uh, with go different and also in Europe there were actions over the weekend in APL uh, La Liga there was no um, uh, weekend fixtures for La Liga but there was a cup game where Atletico Bilbao beat Mallorca to lift uh, the King's Cup after 40 years of uh, waiting and then uh, in German Bundesliga I think Bayer Leverkusen are cruising home at least getting closer and closer to that title Victor Boniface and Xabi Alonso 40 matches Still running without a loss. They are keeping that record. Let's see if it's going to end that way. Maybe they are going to play more than 50 something matches at the end of the season without losing any games. Zabi Alonso is the man at the helm of affairs in the, the WhatsApp arena in uh, Germany. And also in Italian Syria, Victor Osimen scoring his 111th goal, uh, career goal. Good one over the weekend, 4-2 against their opponent in the Italian Serie A. And all of these and other stories on the show. Enoch Aguguke say he wants to participate at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. And that is where we'll begin on the show this morning. I am Emmanuel Fashimi. Let's start with athletics where Enoch Aguguke, after three years out, uh, the last time we saw him at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, where he got to the finals of the 100 meters uh, race. But uh, at the middle of that race, getting towards the, uh, the middle of that race, he got injured. And after then, we've not really heard much about him. But this time around, he's eyeing uh, to be in Paris 2024. And he has started that uh, pushing for that, uh, at least pushing to get that, uh, that uh, position, pushing to get the ticket, pushing to represent Nigeria at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Over the weekend in Lagos right there, uh, Enoch Agugu uh, looks to return to the Nigerian team for that's for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games, like I said, running a season best of uh, 10.20 seconds at the MTN Champs Athletics Meet in the Badon. That was over the weekend uh, where he did so well to win that race. He came first in that race with a season personal best of 10.20 seconds. And after that, he said, after that race, he said he's pushing and looking forward to be among the team that will go into the Paris 2024. I don't know if uh, Isaac Omidiji is ready to join me on the show so that we can look and Okay, uh, Isaac, for Enoch Agogoke, after three years, now he did so well over the weekend uh, in Ibadan. 10.20 seconds, looking sharp and looking good. The same Agogoke, I saw those glimpses, uh, that uh, those, those flashes of show where we saw him at the Olympics, that is Tokyo 2022 Olympics, but he could not uh, finish that race where Marcel Jacob won, that's the 100 meters final for men at uh, the Olympics in uh, Tokyo, but this time around, Gradually, gradually, he's coming back and he said he wants to be part of the team that will be going to the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Yes, Thank you for having me this beautiful uh, station uh, for Tresist Sports. For the okay, it's a good word. I fact, we saw the you know, flashes of a potential world champion in him at uh, the last Olympics, I mean, the Olympics in 2021 in Tokyo. And Unfortunately, injury didn't allow him to have a perfect ending to that particular uh, Olympic. However, he has returned and he has returned with fire, you know, winning that particular uh, other meters meet in Badon. And the problem he only has now is competing for that team with wonderful and great athletes that are currently blazing the trade for Nigeria. You know, talking of consider a canon, it's a Kiri. So many other wonderful guys who are doing good, who also did very well in the, the, the African Games, who have also done well in the National Sports Festival. 
so for uh, I mean, okay, it's, it's not going to be easy for him. Uh, we know that yes, we don't want to go off, but because of the fact that he has not been around for a while now, my question is position. But if there is a spot left and is qualified for that spot, you should be given the opportunity because that guy has history paid. Okay, that guy has what it takes uh, to be, actually be part of the team that will be going to the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Uh, for Enoch Agdewike, after that injury, uh, the Tokyo 2022 Olympics, we didn't really hear much of him. He has to go and recuperate uh, going through that injury. Uh, now, uh, Isaac, uh, I believe it, it's not really an easy one for somebody who has been out for three years coming back, running a time of 10.20 seconds just over the weekend. Uh, it shows that, yes, uh, this injury worries is over. He has put that uh, behind him and he's ready to go. Uh, do you, with the likes of Fevo Ashi and Koda we have right now, I, I don't know, do you fancy his chances to be in that team going to uh, Paris 2024? That, that was the point I raised, that the guys are competing against presently at some time. He just mentioned Fevo again who has been doing very well with one wonderful uh, minutes and time. Uh, for Adekoke, I think if he didn't make it to the Olympics, I would not be surprised. The present guys of Grant are blazing the trail and they are doing very well. We know, we know the potential of Adekoke, but he has been sustained because of injury. So co coming out now, uh, we need the meat in the battle. He's only just telling us that he is good. But the question is, is he as good as those who have been doing in the last year? And those who just in the Africa game. So it, it, it will be tough for him. But if there is going to be a way that will make it, I will not be surprised that it's going to be one of those that will present Africa very well, not just Nigeria, in the Olympic game. But with Trevor Hashi, Consider Ekanem, uh, it, it's actually all these guys are currently out on the track. Oh, very, very, very well. Let's see how that goes for Enoka Dogoke. If definitely uh, he will be part of the team that will be going to Paris 2024. Still talking about the Paris now, let's talk about the round leather game. The Super Falcons, uh, Rashida Ajibade talking also ahead of the return leg on Tuesday at uh, Pretoria, where he says uh, the Falcons, the Falcons are inspired to qualify for the Olympic Games. That is Rashida Ajibade, the captain of the side. Isaac, 1-0 in the first leg here in Abuja, courtesy of uh, Rashidat Ajibade, uh, well-taking penalty to beat uh, uh, Swat, who was in between the sticks for, uh, for South Africa. But uh, going into the second leg uh, tomorrow, uh, a big one, a big one for us, and uh, everything is going to, in fact, tomorrow is the deal day, do or whatever that's going to happen one team just have to qualify for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games uh, Women's uh, Football Event. So, Nigeria going to Pretoria tomorrow. What are you saying? What, what, what is our chances? Uh, uh, do you think we can uh, break the jinx, according to the minister, get that ticket and go to the Olympics? I hope that we will be in Pretoria with like at least a two-go caution. Uh, even though, by looking at it, that the away go not really working in this particular qualifier, but it will be a great moral booster for the ladies. I wasn't so confident of our trip to Victoria because of the one year victory and for the fact that it came from the spot kick. So without the spot kick, wouldn't we have caught? So that is the question. And we, with the question also is the Buffalo Buffalo also didn't get a goal in Abuja, which is also a good news for me and for the faculty. So if they know what they should go there and believe that they can also get another victory in Pretoria. They shouldn't go there and say the confidence and be thinking of plan B. No. Go there and the plan alone should be to beat South Africa in Pretoria, which is very possible. Because I, I, I sense some, you know, some attitude of, you know, uh, arrogance from the Bayana Bayana uh, team. They believe they can take Nigeria to you know? uh, They are seeing Pretoria as a home where they will roast South Africa. I hope they will not be the one that was roasted at the end of the day. <laughs> yes, uh, because they were too overconfident of themselves and they were talking so loud and tough uh, ahead of this game in Abuja. But uh, Isaac, uh, overall assessment of the team's play 
on 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 Friday. Uh, what did you see? The, the team really do they really play uh, to the rhythm? Uh, do they really up? Did you see uh, a oh. different Super Falcons? Actually, we won the possession. We were able to possess the ball. We starved them of the ball. And fantastic player, uh, Chris Uchebe, not playing at the midfield. He, he was drafted to play alongside Osinachi Ohale uh, because of uh, Demehin's injury and Ashley Planter, who is not there. Now, Chris Uchebe was not at that midfield. Despite that, we were able to hold our own, we were able to possess the ball. So, a uh, general assessment of that game on Friday. Yes, the major problem is still the midfield going forward. That is it. There are, you know, shortages of direct passes, clinical passes that will open the defense line of the, of the South African Cup. I watched it via the streaming line of the NFL television, and what I saw was not so impressive. Yes, we were in charge, we dominated in terms of position, we kept them at bay, uh, we, we made sure that they played to our own style of football, and now we play into that style of football. But the question is, we don't have that perfect linkage from the midfield to the attackers going forward. We love going to the wings, but even with the wingers, don't really bring up in any good crop, meaningful crosses for the striker. So these are some of the lapses I, I, I saw in the team, and I hope they will, they will be correct, corrected before the game in Pretoria tomorrow. Don't forget that the South Africans are also very smart. They know how to, they have games with us. They have players, I mean, they have officials who are about have taken note of some of our lapses, and I hope that we will also have the same with South Africans of Nigeria, are intelligent enough to see that these South Africans are beatable. Forget the arrogance. The arrogance is outside. It's more of them, you know, intimidate them. They're only just trying to intimidate the proper country. The most proper country should be able to soak whatever intimidation is coming. And a lot of Nigerians, if the Nigerian spirit comes into them, we will take the Bayana Bayana to clean it. Okay, let's see how that game goes tomorrow. The guests are fully prepared. They had uh, their last training here in Abuja yesterday at uh, the MKO Abiola National Stadium before jetting out of the country uh, for South Africa. Probably tomorrow that game will be coming up at the Loftus Verse Field in Pretoria, South Africa. We are expecting the Super Falcons to get one of the tickets from the African continent that will present the women in a women's football event at the Olympic Games. Also, the Lionesses, uh, that is the uh, Atlas Lionesses of Morocco against Zambia, they also are leading that game 2-1, first leg, and uh, they also will be looking to get one of the tickets to represent the African continent at the Games. All right, let's uh, leave uh, uh, the Olympic uh, story and come back to the continent and quickly look at uh, the CAF Confederations Cup. The only Nigerian team left in the CAF Confederations Cup. Ah, eventually, uh, Rivers United lost the return leg to USMO Jazz, the defending champions in Nigeria. 2-0 uh, goals from um, each of the half from Malian striker Abdullah Kanu who got uh, the one goal in the first half and the second goal in the second half to erase the first leg defeat uh, where they suffer one need defeat here in Nigeria and they were able to go through uh, one need as in two goals on aggregate, uh, two one on aggregate with that uh, conceding a goal. For, but for Rivers United, uh, they did well. Uh, it's just that uh, I believe um, they, they really didn't understand the rhythm. In the second half of that game, Rivers United was better uh, in the second half, but uh, couldn't convert some of their chances that came their way. Isaac and now Rivers United is out of the continent. We don't have any Nigerian team remaining on the continental uh, uh, football. You know, when the drills were made, it was USM Hodgers against Rivers United. For me, it was a matter of uh, when, it was a matter of if. And uh, I think kudos to even be given to the Rivers United that they were not disgraced out of this tournament by. The Algerians, because we know what they are capable of. And you know that for Rivers United, uh, scoring just a goal in, uh, uh, in the first leg that was played at the Costa Rica Public Stadium was not good enough. Uh, probably they've gotten two, three. Going there, the pressure will be on the Algerians more. But the Algerians were able to get the number of goals needed and they qualified for the next stage. It, it shows that, again, we are, our club sides have demonstrated that they are not playing away from home. How many of the Nigerian club sides in the last five years on the continent have gone away and got a victory? You know, it's very difficult for them. Even at, uh, what's it called? At the preliminary stages, where you see some mushroom clubs coming in, say that they beat the Nigerian club sides, I was there, I used to get a draw 
go back to Nigeria and, and get the required victory over them. And that's how we'll be able to do it. But we won't be able to take our feet on the ground in terms of the continental game to show that anywhere on the continent where our club they can get victory. Okay, let's see. For Rivers United, it is the end of the road for them in uh, the CAF Confederations Cup. Uh, in the second leg, they lost to USMO Jazz 2-0 and it ended 2-1 on aggregate. Let's uh, leave uh, Rivers United and uh, let's look at uh, this story. Let's come back home. Let's come back uh, to Nigeria. Uh, something uh, is spectacular, <laughs> incredible. Let me not use the word spectacular, but it's, it was a bizarre one. Um, it, it doesn't really tell well of our league. Uh, over the weekend in the Nigerian National League, that is NNL, that where teams are promoted to the Nigerian Premier Football League, the Senior League of the Land, uh, the, the game between Jigawa Golden Stars and Sporting Supreme of Abuja, uh, something bizarre happened where uh, a referee awarded the goal, the referee awarded the goal that was uh, scored, uh, maybe uh, another hand of God, but uh, Maradona did the hand of God, the referee didn't see it, but this one, it was obvious and clear that uh, uh, it was a handball. Let's quickly look at that video and see what happened between Jigawa Golden Stars and Sporting Supreme of Abuja in uh, the Nigerian National uh, Football League. <laughs> now, uh, that game, the, the, the referee, the center referee actually has been expert completely alongside his assistant. Uh, the name of the center referee is Zaradim Nashiru and his assistant, Usmal Awalu. Isaac, uh, it was obvious from the video clip, the referee was standing directly uh, in front of whatever the action that was going there from a corner kick. Twice, the first player used his hand, and then the second player also used his hand to pull the ball into the net, and the referee awarded the goal. After that goal, he ended the game, and uh, that was it, uh, as you can see on your screen. The name of the referee, like I said, is uh, Zara Dim Nashiru, and uh, Usma Awalu, who was the assistant to him in that particular game. These, don't really, uh, these are some of the things that doesn't really make our league uh, uh, people to, as in, um, sell our league out in a very good light but this one is is, is, is a very bad one uh, for us is it doesn't really tell well of our league and that is why we are suffering what we are suffering most of the times when we go out for uh, continental engagement ah uh, you know, I, I saw the video yesterday and I, I was I was baffled I had so many questions so this is not hand of God this one is hand of devil <laughs> because hand of God was not that intentional. This was a script being acted out, and the uh, main purpose of the script is to just get any goal, anyhow, and that will end the game there. And that was what happened. Because you cannot tell me that that was not a basketball. So he, he looked as if he wants to dunk. You know, he, as if he has jumped by, he wants to make a basket. That was what he cleared. So apart from even expelling the referee, that prayer should be banned. Because what he did was intentional. The club should be punished, if not banned. It's very unfortunate that this win at home or syndrome because of money. How much would the referee be offered? And he has punished his image. Look at that embarrassing. That guy was captured on video. If not, the, nobody would have had any evidence to claim that this is what happened. And this was what was happening over the years in the Premier League, where a, play, a different player will be scoring goals, a different player will be allocated the goals. Yeah, and every day you have a stake. I was going to score in the league. That was when the dark days of the league, we would never have anything like uh, Kimi or whatever to even watch the league. No followership, nothing, nothing. But thank God that uh, this was captured and this uh, the, the, the action has been taken against the referee. He, should be, he has been killed. Uh, I think that is, uh, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. If there's a way it can be taken to the court also, you know, to, 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 for, for suppression. And the player himself that behaved like a basketballer should be banned for life.
Yes, of course, the player also, like I can tell you right now, is also facing some sanctions. And also the team, the Jigawa Golden Stars, is also coming under the hammer of the organizers of NNL. All right, let's leave NNL. I'm going to go straight to the Nigerian Premier Football League match day 29. Enugu Rangers, uh -huh. after 10 matches on beating, they eventually they lost in the seven goal thriller. Let's look at the result quickly and then we'll look at the table, how they are standing. Despite that loss from Enugu Rangers again, Against Kassina United, they still remain at the top of the table. Plato United whitewashed, they trashed, they beat Doma United 4-0 at the Joe Stanship Stadium. Rambo Stars 2-1 was 2-1 uh, against Aqua United. Sunshine Stars of Akura and Bayesha United played 1-1. Lobby Stars pipped any by FC 1-0. I need the judge complaining about the officiating in that game also. Heartland FC of Uwere actually had to dig deep to beat Swat in Lagos 3-1. Good one for Heartland who are looking to escape a regulation. Kassina United like I said, against Enugu Rangers, it was 4-3, 7 goal three line in that game. And uh, for Fidelis Lechuko, he said, wow, uh, it's not good for them conceding 4 goals in that game. Kora United and Bendel Insurance played a 1-1 draw. And Niger Tornados trashed Whitewash Gombe United 5 Neil, let's look at the table quickly and see how the teams are standing after this round of games in March Day 29. Nugu Rangers still remain at the top with 51 points, but 14 goal difference they have. Lobby Stars is second also with 51 points, but eight goal difference. So uh, for Enugu Rangers, they have a better goal difference than Lobby Stars. Remo Stars is third with 49 points. Enyiba fourth with 48 points. We have Plato United who are fifth with uh, 47 points. Casina is sixth with 44 points. Shooting Stars of Ibadan is seventh with 43 points. Kano Plus is eighth with 41 points. We have Ninja Tornadoes nine, 39 points. And Bendel Insurance is tenth with 38 points. Let's look at the flip side of the table quickly. We have um, uh, Gombe United now who has now uh, occupied the position of Heartland FC of Uwere, <laughs> half 22 point Heartland, Heartland half 26, Aqua United is at 18 position with 31 points, Rivers United who has played a lesser games than every other team half 31 points and eventually if they play those games, those they are outstanding games and they win, definitely they will be close to the top of the table. We have Bayesa United on the 15th position with 34 points. Isaac, quickly, for Enugu Rangers, they relinquished, although they did not relinquish the top of the position, but uh, after 10 matches on beating, eventually they wanted to continue down beating run, but Casino uh, United said no, and it ended 4-3 at the end of the day. Seven goal thriller. Right now in the second stanza, we are seeing more goals than the first stanza of the Nigerian Premier Football League. So you even have scored three goals away from home by Rangers shows the quality of the team. However, just as Delhi Nechuko complained, considering four is also not good for them. But they don't they shouldn't expect that the competition um, will continue that much. This is the Nigerian Premier League. Uh, they will meet a, a particular bogey team and that bogey team will take you out of your winning mood. And that was what Castaneda did to uh, Rangers International. And they have sold a good seed, a very strong one, and that's why they fed the defeat. They are at the top of the league. Uh, do or go different. That is why it's good. Score goals. And to also say Tornado, scoring five. I can't remember the last time Tornado scored five goals in the game. Mm -hmm. And they scored five against Gumbi United. You know, you, you look at Atletico United also trashed to my wife. One goes to nothing. So many goals over the game. And that's very impressive. And that is very good. All right, let's leave the Nigerian Premier Football League and go straight to the EPL. Manchester United against Liverpool, it was 2-2 at the end of the day. Chelsea against Sheffield also played a 2-2 draw for Manchester City. 4-1 uh, against, against uh, Crystal Palace over the weekend. And the English Premier League also is looking so hot right now. Arsenal and Liverpool are on the same number of points, uh, but goal difference separating those two teams. And Manchester City is pushing, is coming close. We also have Aston Villa have Tottenham also, who are also sniffing around to see where they can finish uh, on the table and probably play in the Champions League come next season. Over the weekend, there were fantastic results in the English Premier League, as you can see on your screen. Like I said, Manchester United 2-2 against Liverpool. Sheffield and Chelsea also played a 2-2 draw. Tottenham also won, trash Nottingham Forest 3-1. Uh, Crystal Palace lost a set of sparks to Manchester City 4-2. A brace from Kevin De Bruyne scoring 100 goals and 158 assists for Manchester City. Aston Villa and Brentford played a 3-3 draw. Everton beat Burnley 1-0. Newcastle United beat Fulham at Craven Cottage 
Madrid 1 0. Uh, Luton Town, good team, uh, the most prolific side in the English Premier League this season for Luton Town. They score in every game 2 1 against AFC Bournemouth. Wolverhampton Wanderers lost to West Ham United 2 1. And Arsenal a beat Brighton and Hove Albion to keep a clean sheet. Thrilling at the end of the day at the uh, American Express Stadium. Now let's look at the, the English Premier League table quickly. Uh, where team at how they are standing. Arsenal is now top of the table. 51 goal difference to Liverpool, 42, who is second. Both of them have the same number of points, 71, 71. Manchester City have 70 points. We have Tottenham as well, who has 60 points. Uh, Aston Villa also have 60 points, but goal difference also separating four and fifth. Goal difference separating first and second. And then we have Brighton on the 10th position, with for the three points. Chelsea is on the ninth position, with 44 points. Let's look at the flip side of the table quickly. Manchester United is sixth with 49 points, and we have Wolves on the 11th position, with 42 points, Sheffield United, despite that fantastic display against Chelsea, they still remain at the, at the bottom with 16 points. And the English Premier League is looking so good. Uh, Isaac, quickly, in 10 seconds for the English Premier League, Manchester United 2 2 against Liverpool, at least making uh, opening up that uh, title race now. Uh, any team among uh, Chelsea, Manchester, uh, among uh, Manchester City, Liverpool, and uh, Arsenal. Also, we cannot forget Tottenham Bosport, who is pushing, Aston Villa, who is pushing these uh, outsiders. But these three teams I first mentioned, they have the chance to lift the English Premier League this season. Very impressive and very interesting. Clubs are fighting for the league, uh, for the league title. You cannot even beat your chest to say this is where the league title is going to, you know, end. So, with more games to go, let's say it continues, unless the team that steps down first, the team that gets tired, that loses focus, will definitely see that. But it's a fight to finish. Okay, uh, let's quickly run over other league results uh, as we are, our time is against us. Let's go straight to the Italian Serie A. Also, there were games over the weekend. Quickly, let's just look at the result and then we'll have the first side of the table for Victor Simen getting goal in that four, two, uh, in that four goals uh, against uh, their opponent in the Italian Serie A. And for Victor Simen, is a good one that he's getting goals uh, uh, right now, at least to boost his confidence as teams are sniffing around him. All right, we'll have the result on the screen. It's similar and three against Lice, Roma, Pip, Lazio, 1-0, Empoli, 3-2 against Torino, Bologna and Frosinone played a goalless draw, uh, Monza lost to Napoli, like I said, 4-2, uh, Victor Simen getting goal in that particular one, Cagliari, 2-1 against Atlanta, Hellas, Verona, 1, Genoa, 2, and Juventus, Pit Fiorentina 1 0 also at uh, at home. All right, the table Inter Milan still stay at the top of the table. Who has a game in hand that will be playing later on today? 79 points and Fiorentina is 10th with 43 points. All right, let's go straight to the German Bundesliga and just look at the table. Just the table of the German Bundesliga where. Bayer Leverkusen, they won 1-0 one over the weekend against Union Berlin and they have opened up how many points gap to their second uh, position, who is uh, Bayern Munich with 60 points and Hidehem is on the 10th position after beating Bayern Munich in that game 2-1, uh, 33 points and then for the French League also there were games in the French League let's just have the French League result without the table because our time is fast spent let's just look at the result of the French League and then uh, we just go from the show we have Lens and Le Havre play the 1-1 one -one Paris Saint-Germain won against uh, Clement Foot 1-1 uh, one -one, Brest 4 men 3 and Lyon trash Nantes 3-1 and we have fixtures in the Nigerian Premier Football League today Kano Pillars will be playing to, today at least to complete the match day 29 in the, the nigerian premier football league all right isaac that is where we'll be leaving it on the program thanks for joining me on the show isaac omidiji for doing all you did on the show and that is it on 360 sports i am emmanuel fashimi <laughs>